Hello YouTube, Wes here checking in with a brand new episode of The Vinyl Survivor. I believe this is episode number 195. Thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've had an episode of The Vinyl Survivor, uh, but we're going to get back into the swing of things. i got a lot of records to talk about, a lot of stuff I've been listening to. So let's go ahead and get into this. As always, The Vinyl Survivor features 10 recently listened to albums from my inbox. I let you know what I think of each one and let you know whether they're going to be going in my permanent collection or whether they just weren't for me and they're going to be going away. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. First album from 1973, we have The Guess Who with Sewn and Grown in Canada. Uh, so this is sort of a cash-in compilation sort of thing that Wand Records released to try to cash in on the, the growing popularity of The Guess Who. Uh, so these are some earlier recordings from them that they had, and mainly this was released to uh, re-release the, the their cover of Shaking All Over. Um, so, yeah, just sort of interesting listen, but not really anything I want to keep. You know, it's, it's the guess who, but it's not necessarily the guess who you want to hear. Uh, it was, it was an interesting listen, but not anything worth keeping unless you're just an absolute completist. Um, and this is on the Wand Records label with kind of a interesting uh, paint splatter kind of label there. I haven't think I've seen that label before. That might be a little bit later of a release. The Guess, the guess Who, Sewn and Grown in Canada. Not a keeper. Interesting listen, but not for me. Okay, next thing we have here is the album from Kevin Morby from 2017 titled City Music. Um, so Kevin Morby is kind of a indie folk singer-songwriter, but in a modern style. Sometimes gets a little bit sort of light psyche kind of sounding. Overall, I didn't really like this album, I have to say. Is this was a uh, Vinyl Me Please exclusive album of the month while I was subscribed to them. And, and yeah, I just never really caught on with this album. Uh, my favorite track on here is the title track, City Music. It kind of starts out real mellow and kind of, you know, introspective kind of singer songwriter kind of sound. And then in the middle, it builds up to this kind of a crescendo of, of you know, more energy and more more excitement and then it sort of mellows down again at the end it's a nice long track uh yeah that, that was my favorite but overall the album i just didn't really care for it at all i don't know if this is exclusive to the vinyl we please version but the inside is printed lots of extras here oh, they did do nice nice packaging anyway it comes with a nice large booklet with photos and and liner notes and tr lyrics and whatnot as well so there's that, and then there's, there's the exclusive Vinyl Me Please art print, and then the vinyl itself is pretty kind of like, a, I guess you could call this cream sickle, kind of an orange and white vinyl pressing, pretty nice, uh, but yeah, the, the music just, it was okay, just didn't really, didn't really do it for me. Uh, so yeah, Kevin Morby's City Music, not going to be a keeper for me. All right, next up, going all the way back to 1970, we have the second studio album from the folk rock group Sweetwater, titled Just For You. Uh, yeah. and I guess this will be their first album after they played uh, Woodstock. Uh, they were they were meant to open Woodstock, but they were still stuck in traffic when they were when the show started. So Richie Havens went on for them. Um, but they did eventually play. Uh, but yeah, this is their second album after took place in 1970 after Woodstock. Uh, just some nice, you know, as I said, sort of country, countryish folk rock kind of stuff. You know, it's nice. It was a nice listen, but in the end, it's not for me. And this one, Sweet Water, and it's kind of got some water damage to it. So it was just a nice one to listen to, but not anything I want to keep. This is on the Reprise label. 
Okay, well, next up we have the debut album from the prog rock group Triumvirat from 1972. This one's titled Mediterranean Tales, and yeah, Triumvirate. Look up prog rock in the dictionary, and you're going to see Triumvirate probably. That's, that's how proggy they are. Just very much progressive rock, early 70s progressive rock kind of sound. Uh, very, a little bit medieval, a little bit just all over the place, the, the way, you know, the way prog rock is, but this is a, this is a really good album. Did really enjoy listening to this quite a bit. Uh, this is a German pressing of it. It's on the wonderful Harvest label. We love that label. Triumvirate Mediterranean Tales, as I said, straightforward, straight ahead prog music. If you like prog, you're gonna like this. If you like prog, you probably already have this. Uh, so that's that's a keeper for me. All right, next up, moving all the way back up to the year in 2017, but still very progressive. We have the Project Super Group, not really a super group, just sort of a collaboration project titled Planetarium. Uh, features uh, Sufjan Stevens, Nico Mulley, Bryce Desner of The National, and James McAllister. Um, and they came together and did this sort of spacey, progressive rock kind of project titled Planetarium. And it's, it's definitely a very cool listen. Very, very space rocky kind of sounding thing. Uh, definitely dug hearing this. There's the gatefold and all the, the title tracks are planets. Uh, Neptune, Jupiter, Venus, Uranus, Mars, Moon. Well, Moon's not a planet. Pluto is not a planet. <laughs> Uh, uh, still a planet in my opinion, but Saturn, Earth, Mercury. Uh, yeah, just again, spacey, progressive rock kind of stuff done by some uh, excellent, excellent musicians. Uh, really, really nice listen. And the inner sleeves feature some cool photography, kind of gives you that, that Pink Floyd vibe. And it does, it does, it's a little bit Floydish in, in its sound uh, on the 4AD label. Here's what the the vinyl looks like this is just black vinyl pressing. Lots of different planet surface labels, which is very cool again. And it is a 2LP set, but I won't pull the other one out for uh, to keep the time shorter here. Also some art prints included in this uh, as well. Very nice. So yeah, really interesting release and interesting collaboration kind of thing, and uh, yeah, a, a fun listen. Not not it's not going to blow you away. It's not incredible, but it's just a good, enjoyable listen. If you like if you like any of those artists, you'll probably like that project. Okay, we're going to take a detour into the land of new wave for a bit. Uh, we have the sixth studio album by the band Split Ends titled Waita. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'm, I'm trying to guess uh, why it means song and singing in the native uh, uh, in the native sort of New Zealand New Zealand native language. Uh, um, so yeah, it was kind of cool how they did that. Uh, yeah, just a really good new wave album. Kind of bounces all over the place a bit, but good solid new wave sound. Did I say the year on this one? 1981 is the year. So. Kind of in that earlier earlier period where it kind of get, can get a little punky at times and a little bit synthy at other times. And this is on the AM Records label. All right, next up, staying solidly in the sort of new wave genre here, we have Ultravox's Vienna from 1980. So again, kind of that early period. Uh, this is their First album with Midjur, their fourth album as a group. This one is even more than the last one. Lots of different things happening here. Uh, some of these songs are, are, are more punky. Some of these songs are almost craftwork esque and they're very, very heavy, kind of robotic sounding uh, electronic kind of music. 
really, really interesting album, really good album. I think this is a pretty classic album of the genre, uh, and yeah, I really, I really enjoyed listening to this. I've been listening to it a bunch. Uh, some standout tracks on here, uh, New Europeans, that one's kind of a little more on the punky side. The track Astrodyne is really a chilled out sort of instrumental synthy kind of sound that's like spacey electronic music. Um, and then um, Mr. X, it almost sounds like a, you know a craft work track. It's very again, it's as I said, it's very robotic electronic music and really really good album. Definitely highly recommend checking this one out if you can. And that's on the Chrysalis label. Um, it's a white label, but I don't think it's a promo. I think that's just how it is. Uh, so yeah, definitely Ultravox Vienna. Absolutely get that one if you can. That one's going in the collection. Okay, next up, going back into the <laughs> into the modern times here, uh, back to 2017. This is Halsey's second studio album titled Hopeless Fountain Kingdom. Uh, kind of a bit of a slough, sophomore slump for Halsey, but still a good solid album. I, I really do like Halsey and more and more as she's getting more mature, as she's releasing more and more albums, just keeps getting better and better. Uh, but this is a good, this is a good album, not, not terrible. Um, and yeah, I really did enjoy digging uh, this one. Kind of a bit of a love story kind of album, a bit of, almost like a um, Romeo and Juliet kind of thing. Uh, neat gatefold on that one. And the inner sleeve on this one. Some more artwork and some liner notes on it. And then the vinyl itself is probably one of the prettiest pieces of vinyl I have in my collection. I really, really like this uh, really cool sort of blue splatter vinyl but it's just the video is not doing this justice but killer killer color in here and just i love how the the blue kind of drops in there it makes these like eye shape kind of pick pieces in there uh yeah really killer uh, so i was really happy to see that and, and yeah like i said it's a good it's a good solid pop album modern modern pop kind of stuff all right, next up, we got a compilation of New Age music from 1986, I believe, is the year on this one. Uh, this one's titled Standing Stones. And yeah, just a bunch of New Age artists from the 80s, so it definitely has that, it's starting to get into that later, sort of softer New Age kind of music here. Not, not the best thing. Um, it was a nice listen. There were a couple tracks on here I liked. Uh, there's a track on here by Rick Wakeman, actually. That's pretty cool. Uh, but overall, I just didn't enjoy this, so I'm not going to be keeping this one. There's the label on that one. It's good. The Coda label. It is on a Quiex vinyl. I don't have a light behind me to show it, but maybe you can see some light coming through there. A lot, of, a lot of this 80s New Age stuff was on Quiex. Okay, and last but not least, let's do a bit of jazz. Cool it off with some jazz here. John Coltrane's Alternate Takes. So these are exactly what the title says it is. It's alternate takes from the recording sessions of Giant Steps, um, Coltrane Jazz, and Coltrane Sound. Um, and yeah, these are just some leftover alternate stuff. It was a fun listen. It was okay, but again, nothing that's going to blow you away. So unless you're a completist for Coltrane, not necessary to get. Or maybe if you just find it in a dollar bin or you know flea market or whatever, and you want to just hear it, it's it's a fun one to pick up and spin, but not not anything you have to have. And it's on the Atlantic label. So that one's not going to be staying around either. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode of The Vinyl Survivor. I thank you very much for watching. About half of them made it this time. So a pretty good episode. Hope you found something in there that you want to check out for yourself. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments section down below. Leave me a like. Subscribe if you aren't already. Be kept up to date with future episodes. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Great night. Remember, there is no bad music. There's only music you don't like. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers.